among the steps in the Buddha's instructions on breath meditation are the steps where he tells you to breathe in and out, sensitive to pleasure, breathe in and out, sensitive to rapture. You may ask yourself, well, where is, this? where is the pleasure, where is the rapture? You have to learn how to breathe in a way that gives rise to it. The Buddha doesn't tell you how. And John Lee gives some instructions, it gives you some ideas. Thinking about the breath in different ways. The in and out breath, the breath that is an energy that flows to the body. And it can flow in the body in different ways. And it gives you some ideas of how to work with it. Changing the length of the breath, changing the depth of the breath. How fast or slow it is. where you think the breath is coming into the body, you can play with that. This is especially useful when you're meditating all day, and you find that you've been overworking some of the muscles in the body that have been doing the breathing where the other muscles have been getting a free ride. The Buddha talks about perception as being a mental fabrication, having an effect on the mind. Sometimes it's direct, but sometimes it's through the breath. The way you perceive the breath is going to have an effect on how you feel it in the body. Because the breath is something that we intentionally do. It's one of the few processes that can go on unintentionally or basically subconsciously intentionally or more consciously. And the problem is when we start getting conscious of it, we start screwing it up. We have certain cartoon ideas about where the breath comes in, which part of the body has to do the work. And if we don't vary those ideas, it gets very uncomfortable. So learn how to change things. Learn how to think about the breath coming in different ways, coming in from the back, coming down from the top of the head. If you notice that any one set of muscles is overworked, give them a holiday. Relax them and tell yourself something in the body will have to pitch in. And this way you get some variety in the way you breathe. You can have that sense of fullness. The Pali word bitti, which we translate as rapture, can also mean refreshment. It's a sense of being energized by the breath, refreshed by the breath. Ask yourself, what kind of breathing would be refreshing? see what comes up. Because sometimes it's simply the attitude that the breath is a more mechanical process that doesn't allow the more refreshing side of the breath to show itself. And don't think of the breath as having boundaries. We tend to squeeze the end of the in-breath or squeeze the end of the out-breath. So it's really sharp, clear. Now you're breathing in, now you're breathing out. But you don't need to make it clear. Let things flow smoothly in the body. And think of the breath energy filling the body, which means that when you're breathing out, try not to squeeze things out. If the breath is going to go out, it's going to do the work on its own. yourself, you'll help it come in. But as for going out, that's its business. See how that changes the way you feel about the breath and how the breath energy in the body changes as well. And we're doing this partly so we can have a sense of well-being. As the Buddha said, one of the purposes of concentration is to give yourself a comfortable abiding, he calls it, a comfortable place to stay right here, right now. But it's also good for developing good qualities in mind. That sense of well-being in the body is an important form of wealth. When you think about being generous with material things, it's a lot easier to be generous when you have wealth, when you have a sense that you have more than enough. 
And it's the same when we're spreading thoughts of goodwill, thoughts of compassion to other people, thoughts of empathetic joy. You want to have something to spread. You want to have a sense that you have some of these things already, the happiness that you're wishing for other people. It's a lot easier to feel happiness for them when you feel that you've got some and you've got more than enough. You've got some to share. So sitting here breathing comfortably is not simply a nice way to relax or a selfish activity. It puts the mind in the right mood to be more generous with its goodwill, more generous with its compassion. There's a passage where the Buddha said that for a monk, the Brahma Viharas, goodwill, compassion, empathetic joy, equanimity for all beings without measure, without limit. This is a monk's wealth. As monks, we don't have that many material possessions, but we do have the sense of expansiveness, or we can develop this sense of expansiveness based on the sense of well-being we have as we practice. This applies not only to monks, but everybody who practices. When you can give rise to a sense of well-being and maintain that sense of well-being inside, you're more likely to want to share. Sometimes you start with the people who are close to you, but then you begin to realize, why stop there? You want to develop a spacious mind. You've got this sense of well-being filling the body, we have well-being filling the mind. And the ability to feel goodwill or extend thoughts of goodwill to everybody without exception. That makes the mind expansive. It's like living in a much larger house, a much larger home. So as you meditate, stop every now and then, take some time to spread thoughts of goodwill. Think of whatever sense of well-being you're gaining from the meditation and spread it around. Ask yourself if there's anybody out there for whom you have ill will, you'd, someone you'd like to see suffer. And then ask yourself, what would you gain from that? What would the world gain from that? Part of the mind might say, well, if they suffer, maybe they'll come to their senses. But people very rarely change for the better when they're suffering. It's when they have a measure of goodwill that they can step back from their hunger to get this and get that and think of maybe the way they've been going about trying to feed their desires is not all that good. And when you're wishing goodwill for someone, what does it mean? Their happiness is going to have to depend on their actions. So you're wishing that they would understand what kind of actions lead to genuine happiness and be willing and able to carry through with those actions. And that's something you should be able to extend to anybody, no matter how horrible they've been. In other words, you're giving them some freedom. You're Recognize the fact that we do have freedom of choice, and you're not closing people up in little boxes in your mind. The mind gains some freedom this way as you allow them some freedom, the freedom to choose. So we're developing a whole body awareness, filling the whole body with a sense of well-being, a whole mind awareness filling the mind with a sense of well-being, putting the two together. It's very similar to the process of dedicating merit. You do something good, and you realize that you're going to gain happiness as a result of doing that good thing. But then you think, well, how about spreading that around to somebody else? May other beings also share in this happiness. And when you think that, your happiness expands whether they're actually in a position to receive that merit or not, that's beyond your control. But the fact that you're willing to share expands on the merit. The same way here with the meditation. You just develop a sense of well-being and learn how to maintain it, learn how to put some variety in the breath so you can keep engaged with the breath. Then you think of 
spreading goodwill to others based on this sense of well-being. That expands the well-being, makes it even more solid. So you learn an important lesson that the more you share, the more you gain in return. So think of the, the practice of meditation as an exercise in goodwill, starting with goodwill for yourself and spreading to others. It's not a goodwill that's simply expressed in phrases or words. It's goodwill expressed in skill, in skill of how to breathe, how to relate to your breath, and how to think of others, that they may be happy too. Thinking about how wherever other beings are right now, you've been there before. You start thinking of the, the beings of the world as not being strangers in any way. Those who are poor, well, you've been poor. Those who are rich, you've been rich. Those who are powerful, you've been powerful before. Those who are oppressed, you've been oppressed. Those who've done good things, those who've done bad things, well, you've done good things and bad things too. When you can think of this way, then your goodwill becomes really strong. The sense of well-being that comes with that goodwill becomes strong as well. So develop inner wealth like this and then invest it so that you spread it around. Invest it by spreading it around. And you find it becomes something you really can depend on.